Nothing but good news coming from Vishay Opto Electronics. Today we're announcing the TSOP1 series of IR receivers. And for the next few minutes, we're going to talk all about it. But before we get to that, I want to make sure that you know that at vishay.com slash optoelectronics, you can get access to our entire portfolio of optoelectronic components. But today we're going to talk about IR receivers. So we wake up every day and we ask ourselves, how can we make our IR receivers better than they are today? And we focus on some key performance parameters. One, high sensitivity, which translates to best-in-class transmission range. The second, the receiver has to be insensitive to all possible forms of disturbing ambient light. Third, insensitive to RF disturbances, particularly Wi-Fi. And fourth, the output pulse has to be extremely accurate to the input pulse width. Within each of the packages shown on the screen, there's a photodiode and an IC. And in the case of Heimdall, there's actually two photodiodes. The photodiode receives the light uh, from an infrared emitter, say the remote control unit for your TV or DVD, and the IC does the signal processing of that. The IC is largely responsible for making an IR receiver great. So let's look at each one of the performance parameters and see how the TSOP1 series stacks up. First, high sensitivity. Now, sensitivity is defined by a term called minimum irradiance, and it is key to establishing an IR receiver's long range. Its unit of measure is milliwatts per meter squared. Vichet has the leading sensitivity of any receiver in the world. Now, the TSOP1 series has a minimum irradiance of 0.08 milliwatts per meter squared. It's equivalent to the TSOP3 and TSOP75 series IR receivers and better than the TSOP4, 2, 5, and 77 series. The second parameter we want to look at is insensitivity to disturbing light. Now, your compact fluorescent lights emit infrared light in frequencies from 45 kilohertz to 90 kilohertz. And part of that light emitted is in the near infrared range around 940 nanometers. IR receivers are sensitive to these frequencies and wavelengths. The job of the receiver's AGC is to discriminate between this optical noise, say from a CFL, and the actual remote signal from your remote control unit. It does this by reducing the gain until the optical noise is below the receiver's threshold. Now, we test a lot of different light sources uh, and see how our receivers perform. And looking at the TSOP1 series here, it did the best of all the receivers with a receiving range score of over 46. If we think about a TV or a set-top box in your home, that device will have an IR receiver for remote control, and it'll have antennas to interface to the Wi-Fi network. These devices get smaller and smaller and smaller, so the IR receiver is getting placed closer and closer and closer to the antenna. And these RF frequencies, say 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, can cause spurious pulses on the receiver output, which will corrupt your remote control signal. So the remote control won't necessarily work which brings us to how we measure Wi-Fi insensitivity. We basically put the receiver relatively close to the Wi-Fi antenna, see if there's spurious pulses while the Wi-Fi network is operating, and move it closer and closer and closer until we actually see spurious pulses on the output. Now, looking at the data for 2.4 gigahertz and the TSOP1 series, didn't matter how close we got to the antenna, the TSOP1 series didn't show any spurious output pulses. And when we move to 5 gigahertz for the mold package, the TSOP1 series could get to about 0 0.05 centimeters from the antenna before we saw some pulses on the output. But for the minicast and the Heimdall, again, it could get as close to the antenna as we could make it, and we still not, didn't see spurious pulses. The last parameter we want to look at is pulse width accuracy. Now, ideally, the output pulse width 
of the IR receiver would be exactly the same as the incoming pulse width, but they deviate slightly because of timing of internal logic circuits, filtering processes, and feedback loops within the IC. Some remote control codes have very strict limits on how much the output pulse width can deviate before it's no longer accepted by the decoder. RCMM is one of those remote control codes. Our TSOP1 series receivers offer the most accurate pulse width. And any TSOP1 receiver with AGC1, AGC3, or AGC5 can be used to receive the RCMM code. So let's take a look at how the TSOP1 receivers did against our current portfolio. First, high sensitivity. It was good as or better than our existing receivers. Insensitive to all forms of disturbing light? Better. Insensitive to RS, particularly Wi-Fi? Better. And finally, high pulse width accuracy? It was better. So we're quite proud of the performance of the TSOP1 series of IR receivers. So if you have a situation where your Wi-Fi antenna and your IR receiver are right on top of each other, or you have a high degree of disturbing ambient light, or you're using RCMM or one of the other remote control codes that require high pulse width accuracy, the TSOP1 series IR receivers are for you. And shown on the screen is all the different packages and all the different AGCs that we offer. So, hey, thanks for sticking with this. This is a little bit longer webinar than we normally do, but uh, the performance of the TSO1 series IR receivers really deserve this amount of attention. And we'll uh, catch you the next time. Thanks again.